the first time ever that a tropical storm warning is in effect. You're listening to Weather with Enthusiasm. Sunday, August 20th. The first tropical storm in over 80 years. Oh my gosh. Hit Southern California today with rainfall amounts that you literally, it's unbelievable. Death Valley, California, Furnace Creek, California. Listen to this. They average 2.2 inches of rain per year, the entire year, meaning the whole rainy season where they get rain. And then the summer season where they don't get rain, temperatures average about 115 degrees during the afternoons in the month of July. Forecasting for right now, total snowfall accumulations not snowfall (laughs) rainfall accumulations of three to five inches of rain this is reported from the Washington Post they get much of their weather when it comes to places outside of Washington DC much of the information they get comes from the National Weather Service Los Angeles California San Diego California storm system goes right through San Diego later today (gasps) powerful winds this is the first time since 1939 that a tropical storm has hit the area Holy And it's the first time ever that a tropical storm warning is in effect. This is absolutely phenomenal stuff. Forecast rainfall accumulations up to 10 inches is forecasted for some areas. (gasps) Although that's higher up in the mountains, that's what it looks like. One computer model showed rainfall accumulations of 13 inches with Los Angeles about 3 inches of rain over the next couple of days. Flood warnings are also in effect, along with wind advisories for much of the desert southwest. Wind advisories are also in effect for the Phoenix, Arizona area. Yesterday was the first time in 67 days where the temperature failed to hit 100 degrees in Phoenix, Arizona. High was only 95. The last time that occurred was in mid-June. Now, all of this phenomenal stuff going on in the desert southwest which we haven't even spoken about all of it we haven't touched upon the tornadoes that are expected possibility weak tornadoes in the northeast quadrant of the storm system which includes large parts of southern california we move over to the midwest and believe it or not for the very first time this summer the heat has finally expanded and is forecast to expand that heat dome off in the south parts of our country the southwest and the south central states have not actually made it that far north in the midwest you know the st louis area is averaging 30 degrees 30 cooling degree days below normal for the summer season This is an indicator that the heat has not been as consistent as it usually is in the St. Louis area. All of that's about to change over the next six, five, six, and seven days for many locations. This is the first time this year that the heat will be reaching the Chicago area. Yes! We're holding right now in late August. And it's finally arrived. We're forecast highs, Chicago, Illinois, forecast high Thursday afternoon, 100 degrees, says the European computer model. That will be the first time the temperature has hit 100 degrees since 2012. And even if you go according to the official forecasts, which are scared to create a forecast of 100 degrees, says the National Weather Service. The fear is that climatologically speaking, temperatures 
usually don't reach 100 degrees. We are past peak heat intensity and peak evaporation rates for the summer. Uh, so to forecast a high of 100 degrees is uh, not climatologically so friendly for Chicago, but having a tropical storm, which once upon a time was a hurricane, hitting the southwestern portions of our country is also not climatologically friendly. The excessive heat is actually in response to a low pressure system on the west coast interacting with the hurricane, not just the hurricane itself, what was a hurricane, which produces a lot of sinking air for areas far away from the hurricane, which produces compressional warming. That is having an impact on the heat here in the Midwest, where temperatures are forecasted to go well into the hundreds, 107 degrees in Nebraska later on this week. Heat indices 115 for the St. Louis area today. Holy cow! Temperatures in the upper 90s to low 100s all week long in St. Louis through Friday. Saturday might be a different story over there, and Friday looks like it might be a different story here in the Chicago area. Forecast highs reaching the low hundreds for Cincinnati, Ohio later on this week. <laughs> Upper 90s to low hundreds. This is very intense stuff. And what's phenomenal over here is the fact that it's taken so long for it to arrive. If it's going to get this hot... This should have happened a month ago, especially for St. Louis. I think it's saying that this is really more of a September heat, which is interacting with a hurricane. It's in response to the heat dome interacting with a hurricane and not really in response to the summer heat. So in a certain way, you could say the heat, the September heat is coming early. You know, meteorologist Tom Skilling said in regards to Chicago, in a, he said many years it's more likely to get 90 degree highs in the first week of September than in August. Now he said that's due to the lower humidity in the first week of September, but it's also due to the interaction with hurricanes. In regards to the humidity, we're certainly not going to have lower humidity humidity in this uh, air mass this week as dew points go up into the upper 70s, even 80 degrees. There's indicators that dew points will be hitting 80 degrees in the Chicago area, 80 degrees in the St. Louis area. Oh my gosh. And the reason why that's not far-fetched is because all summer long we've been seeing dew points near 80, low 80s across portions of the Gulf Coast states. And that's in response to unseasonably hot water temperatures located off the Gulf of Mexico. We have five tropical storms, five uh, storm systems that the National Hurricane Center are monitoring in the Atlantic Ocean. All of them could become a tropical storm or even a hurricane. The next one to impact the area or the next named storm will be Hurricane Nicole if it should develop. We have a low pressure system right now located over the Kansas-Missouri border with a heat dome which will be setting itself up over the Missouri, Iowa area later this week. The decimeters at the 500 MB heights is a staggering. <laughs> 602 decimeter heat dome. The Chicago National Weather Service is calling it a 600 decimeter heat dome, but St. Louis National Weather Service has 602. Either way, this is something, these are numbers that I have not heard for this part of the country in many, many years. In fact, for the St. Louis area, I don't think I've ever heard of that, but in the Chicago area for sure, <laughs> Chicago area for sure, 600 decimeter, that's something very phenomenal. And one would think that that should for likely, very likely, if there's anything that could produce 100 degree heat, it would be something like this. There's always that variable of a pop-up thunderstorm popping into the, especially Chicago. Because there is a thunderstorm complex that's expected to develop over the Michigan area even later this week.
and there's a slight chance that clouds from that system could make it down lake into the Chicago area. In regards to today, although there is a heat advisory in effect for the parts of the Chicago area, people by the lake, including the West Rogers Park area, will likely be spared the intense heat, especially mid-afternoon on, as the lake breeze not only moves in, but it moves in earlier than usual. Temperatures in these areas will quickly drop into the mid-80s. But areas away from this will see temperatures in the low 90s, possibly even mid 90s, with heat indices approaching 105, not only today, but for areas, although south of Kankakee, will remain at 105, heat indices 105 for tomorrow as well. The heat builds back into the Chicago area Tuesday through Thursday, especially Wednesday and Thursday, with high temperatures, upper 90s, low 100s. The lake always makes things a little bit more complex. But this time around, the thunderstorm complexes will be all the way up in Michigan. Nonetheless, it could move down lake. So that's always a possibility here. And then the front moves south of the area on Friday, bringing an end to the heat. And then bringing an end to it, the heat in the St. Louis area by Saturday. I wish everybody a wonderful day. For those of us that have grown up with heat and have not yet had a real chance to experience it yet this summer enjoy this week for those of us that have had enough of the heat well realize we're only two weeks away from meteorological fall which starts september 1st stay safe in areas in california uh, please take those warnings seriously floods are life-threatening as life-threatening as floods are the heat is more destructive than any of these natural disasters, floods, hurricanes, and things like that. More people have died from heat than anything else, tells us the National Weather Service. Stay safe. Have a wonderful day. We're going to go to weather headlines coming up next. The core of Tropical Storm Hillary is nearing Southern California after the storm made landfall in Northern Baja, California, Mexico on Sunday. The risk of catastrophic and life-threatening flooding extends over the Baja, California and portions of the Southwest U.S. through Monday. A year's worth of rainfall in a matter of hours poses a severe threat in the desert areas. The storm's remnants are poised to bring catastrophic flooding to the Southwest U.S. Tornadoes are possible in California, Arizona, Nevada, and Utah. Emergency resources are in place to manage the impacts of Hillary's landfall. Atlantic's fifth storm makes entrance. Emily joins line up. This is from WFLX. Tropical storm Emily becomes the fifth named storm in the Atlantic this season with maximum sustained winds of 50 miles per hour. Emily is expected to weaken and become a remnant low by Monday. Alongside Emily, there are four other tropical concerns, including Invest 98L, which has triggered showers and thunderstorms west of the Cable Verde Islands. The National Weather Service of Boston NBC Boston National Weather Service confirms four tornadoes in New England during the Friday storms. New England was hit by strong morning thunderstorms causing power outages. The National Weather Service has confirmed four tornadoes. Rhode Island experienced an EF2. Massachusetts saw an EF1 tornado in North Attleboro, Mansfield, and another EF1 in Weymouth, along with an EF0 in Stoughton. An additional tornado in eastern Connecticut is under investigation. A rare roll cloud stuns the Florida neighborhood, tells us WTSP. Elongated low-hanging cloud amazed Florida's parish neighborhood Friday morning. Meteorologists identify the captivating phenomena as a roll cloud, a low horizontal tube-shaped arcus cloud associated with a thunderstorm gust front. Roll clouds, quite rare, appear entirely separate from the base of a thunderstorm or other cloud formations. You've been listening to Weather with Enthusiasm.
Hey, so stuff, you're gonna tell us what the weather is, okay? He says, so you're in Chicago right now. Do you think it's warm out? Um. Cold warm. Cold warm? Yeah. What it is means th it means that it's a little warm, but it's a little cold. It's a little warm, but a little cold. Was it hot uh, yesterday or Friday? Was it hot on Friday? Yeah. Yeah? What did you do Friday? How do you know it was hot? What did you did you go? Because I remember. You remember, right? Friday was very hot. It was well into the 90s. So I don't know how hot it was. It rained uh, in the morning. It did. Then it became really humid. And at night it did. But in the afternoon it was really hot. It's and like hard. In the night it was pouring, right? Right, pouring shit in Camo, right? And the winds was unbelievable. Special guest on our show. Uh, what is your name? Jordan. Temperatures going into the low hundreds for the next three days. Holy cow! The Blackberry winter that comes up every year here in the Midwest on May 11th. Several additional feet of snow is expected by Monday morning. <gasps> This was in the forecast from a week ago, and the National Weather Service is finally acknowledging it today. Conditions are favorable for the development of an El Nino. We're going from one extreme to the next extreme. Despite the fact that it's 113 during the day and 46 at night, you could still do a little dance. <laughs> Recorded temperatures during heat bursts have reached well above 104 degrees. Oh my gosh. Google weather with enthusiasm and they're all going to come up. Meteorologist Sukhalev, weather with enthusiasm is his podcast.